Ask Alexis on Times Radio. <laughs> no Alexis today, so it's Ask Henry. Each week you get to ask a question and we find an expert who can tell us the answer. This week, one listener wanted to know, how do we know what time it is? Precisely. Well, joining me now with a fascinating history of timekeeping is Dr. Christian Leith, Senior Curator of the Clock Time Digital Museum. Dr. Leith, Christian, hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you now, for no, It's a pleasure to have you. And um, I'm just wondering where we start. I suppose we should start at the beginning, when time, or at least our modern understanding of time, began. Well, I don't think we can pin a precise date on it, but I do know that the first sundial, the record that we have for the first sundial appearing is around 3000 BC. So people were creating instruments to keep time early on, and they were using the sun, the moon, and they were harnessing the elements to do this. So they were looking at shadows and their movement. They also had water clocks and what we call combustion clocks. Uh, the er earliest evidence we have for those are around 500 AD with the first incense clock. And then we have our first evidence of a candle clock is around 520 AD. So people were keeping time, but um, as far as clocks go, and mechanical means of keeping time, we really don't see those until the early medieval period. And that, that pretty much appears around 1300 with the creation of what we call tower or turret clocks. We also call them cathedral clocks. And we're lucky enough here in the UK to have one of the oldest examples of a turret clock in the Salisbury Cathedral, which anybody can go see today. Um, so, but it's interesting because if we traveled back in time to around 1300, we probably wouldn't recognize those clocks because those early tower clocks did not have hands. And what they did is they sounded out the time for the local community. Yeah, I was so wondering. Tower actually, clocks would be, yeah, Chris, I was yeah. wondering. So, who had access to these clocks, and what would they do um, according to their understanding of what time it was? You know, um, to what degree was this mass consumption, or to what degree was it really the, the, the abbot or the, whoever was running that particular institution or church? Right. Right. Well, we think it was. Uh, the religious orders mm -hmm. that kind of um, influenced the whole creation of, of calling the community to, to action for different behaviors at different times throughout the day. So um, it would have been for, for a call to prayers. And these clocks weren't, they weren't the precision clocks that we just take for granted today. They basically, they just sort of needed to keep a general time, so you'd know when it was generally time to go in for your morning prayers or to go in, come in for your evening prayers. And they also kind of loosely followed a very agricultural schedule that's based on our circadian rhythms of being more productive in the morning and throughout the day while there's daylight and then needing to sleep and recharge at night. Okay, now, Kristen, we need to leapfrog, we need to fast forward yeah. in order to answer our listener's question, how do we know what time it is precisely? So um, can you take us to the atomic clock, these absolute precision clocks that we okay. depend on so and synchronize everything to us? Okay, to atomic clocks. Yeah. Um, atomic clocks, and I am not a scientist, I should, I should preface that, I'm not a physicist, but, uh, for instance, the Museum of Timekeeping in Newark has a lovely exhibit on atomic clocks and their history. And they're basically a 20th century invention. And what the atomic clock does is it measures time by monitoring the resonant frequency of atoms, how fast they vibrate. And uh, let's see, so they, uh, the first atomic clocks, uh, their inception was around 1949, I believe. Mm -hmm. And what they do 
is they operate on this principle of atomic resonance. And um, the first atomic clock, I think it used a, ammonia molecules, according to the Museum of Timekeeping. And it was so precise that it redefined the second. And as of about 1967, I have a figure here that it, it could count 9 trillion 192 or actually I think it's 9 billion 192 million 631,770 oscillations and and the atomic clock that we use today can count that precisely per second and I believe that our atomic clocks are so precise that they're just a few billions of a second off per day. And, and I think there's about 400 atomic clocks throughout the world and they all send their data to satellites and these satellites are what inform our GPS and give us access to this precision time that we take for granted nowadays. Wow. So, so no wonder, Christian, no wonder Christian, that you clock. have um, become fascinated by all of this. I mean, to become senior curator of the Clock Time Digital Museum. At what point did you first start getting interested in this? Oh, I first got interested in horology. Um, it, was, it was a little less than 10 years ago. And um, my training is as an archaeologist, and I specialized in material culture. So I looked at a lot of really complex objects. And through doing various museum projects and museum work and having curatorial experience, uh, I came into contact with Dr. John C. Taylor, OBE, who is probably one of the most important collectors of early British clocks. And he amassed one of the largest private collections that we have in the country. And these are clocks that date from about 1500 to, I think his, his newest clock dates to about 1890. Wow. And on clock time, we showcase these clocks dating from about 1500 and on the website, I think, to about 1790. So we're really looking at that early modern early British horology period, which is known as the golden age of British clock. I love it. I love it. Dr. Christian yeah. Leith, senior curator <laughs> of the Clock Time. Oh, you got me interested too, Christian. Uh, senior curator of the Clock Time Digital Museum. Thank you very much indeed. So listener, now you know how we know what time it is precisely. It's Henry Bonsu in for Alexis Conran. It's 26 minutes past three. Now, 